every breath's a sign. And what do you call it when you just can't go on? And you wish in the air would come sooner. Well, I pondered a question and I looked at the time. And I said, well, it's 12 p.m. So let's call it a dooner. Still don't know the lyrics to that. Welcome. Welcome to the Nooner Podcast on the Smodco Internet Radio Network. I'm a host. My name is Marty. I'm here with a bunch of ding-dongs. Is that what they call them? No, we call them merps. Minor net, minor internet radio personalities. A term coined by Dan Etheridge, who just pinged me. Ooh. Yeah. And he, Ping. Yeah, he was uh, just letting me know where to get vaccinated, which is awesome. I hope everybody uh, is lining that up it's a it's a very nice thing to have um i thought you already got vaccinated marty i got the first one but he didn't know that and he was just reaching out oh i get the next one in a uh, week and a half does he know where i can get on prep go on well, i don't know what that is what's prep? Uh, prep is a drug that you take uh to to uh, when you want to get ahead of hiv Mm. When you want to get ahead of HIV, yeah, like it, it, it lessens your chances of catching it, and if you do, it minimizes the spread of it or something. I don't know. It's a. It's Are you a planning thing. to have extra extramarital gay sex in the near yes. future? Yes. Yes. Oh. Like, like literally after the show. Yeah. Oh, I think you driving to Palm Springs as soon as we uh, say goodnight. <laughs> Yeah, because there are no gay condom. people in in LA. Condom. Oh, you what are you, a millennial? Yeah. <laughs> you have to Actually, I am. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right at the. <laughs> uh, how are you guys Martin? doing? I'm here. I'm Marty. I'm by the way. I'm here with John Sylvain, Stephen Kruger, Cassandra Cardenas. Hi. Um, Hello, all you people out there in podcast land. How are you? Cassandra. How's your cell looking tonight? How's your? Because you're in jail. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. Are you in jail, Marty? We're all in jail. No, the listeners. Yeah, Marty, deep. Yeah, Cassandra, you you came on a little bit har- harried. Uh, is everything okay? I'm just busy. Busy, good or busy? I got I got a new agent, which is great, but like, Yay. wait, wait. A funny name? Yeah, do you have a funny name? No, a normal oh. name. Suck. Well, so much for Jason you know. Subaru. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, it's a woman. Oh uh, no. Jamie Subaru? Yeah. Her brother? Her sister? No. It's it's I'm sorry. Her name is Patty Wanda- Pontiac. <laughs> oh Wanda Volvo. <laughs> um yes, hashtag. So I have to like name. fill out all this fucking like paperwork and stuff that oh. I like didn't see the first time that they sent me the email, which makes me look like a total goober. So I've been like rushing to fill this shit out. And then I had work all day today and I wanted to just like, I don't know, like work out on the Peloton and pretend like I actually respected myself, which I don't. Uh, and um, Which is why you're on this podcast. Right. Like this is the opposite of, you know, self like self care and self respect. So um yeah, I'm just like kind of, you know, frustrated. Uh, I can't I can't drink now tonight because I am going to get on the Peloton after. It just fucking sucks. What are you gonna get a DUI if you Peloton under the influence? Uh, yes, I actually uh I wear a uh I, I have to blow before I can get on the Peloton. Oh. Uh, yeah. If you want to join in on the conversation live, we're at Nooner Podcast at, um, on the Twitter. Nooner Podcast at gmail.com. If you ever want to s- drop us an email, we've got some stuff in the sack. Uh, Kruger, do you? Carter, why don't you tweet out this uh, this address and let people join? Like, uh, let, let's have a big. Well, because you know, I've only had one shot. No, 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 not your literal. Last address. time we did that, we got Zoom bombed. Don't you remember? Yeah, let's, let's I'll never Zoom. forget. Oh yeah, no, we do. Uh, yeah, we. We're, on, we're not on Zoom though. Uh, we are not, but we're, that yeah, doesn't make us any. Google Drive bombed. Yeah. yeah. We actually, let's I do, do it. Want, let's see who's out there. No, no, we're gonna have Tyson on. Um, 
Uh, yes, but I'm today is not the best day. I guess I don't know. I'm just a little frazzled myself. Oh no! Yeah, but no, everything's good. No, these are all good problems to have, I guess. Just keeping busy in these times is is feels like a luxury. Uh, even a year in, it, it I just yeah, good thing. I I don't know what I would do if I didn't have a job and a podcast and a very um, loving <laughs> slash. I mean, what I wanted Demand, demanding. I, oh, oh, yeah, partner. <laughs> Um, so and these are good yeah. things. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, the Teen Vogue editor, this is a woman uh, who was hired. Uh, Teen Vogue has been in the past like decade has been sort of gone beyond just sort of teen fashion and gone into sort of had some political stances and, and it's sort of a, a liberal um, media outlet. They hired this woman, Alexi McCammond, a young woman who was a politics reporter at Axios, and she was supposed to start a, a couple weeks ago at Teen Vogue as the editor-in-chief. Then staff members found racist and homophobic tweets that she had posted uh, when she was like 17 or 18. And yeah, she's 27. These were when she was 17. And she was uh, basically maligning an Asian TA and just doing things, uh, spouting things off in a very um, teenage way and rather blasé and stupid. So the question Did she is, use like a swastika emoji after it or something? She did not. She just said oh. uh, it was, uh, I don't you need to go into them, but they they were just like, these sort of uh, casually racist remarks um, in the way you mean bigoted, bigoted, racist, either one. They, they, well, been... a racist has power. She's just saying stuff on the Internet. Um, hmm. OK, yeah. And I, don't know, I just I'm getting like a little tired, like as a bigot myself, you know, uh, I get tired of being called racist all the time by you on this podcast. Wait, wait, but I, is... I have no power of, over anyone. But I'm just how does racism entail power? Well, because there are racist policies towards people, so there is power being inflicted right. upon them. Right. I'm just, I'm just a bigot who says dumb things. But a, a racist remark implies no power. Well, that, I think you're using the word incorrectly. Hold on, which, I've got Noam Chomsky on the line. Let's get him in here. Let's let's see. It <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Noam. Yeah, I'm I know. I? Hello, John. Racist, it's boy, it's... time has ravaged you. You are. <laughs> Look That's funny. Hey, he knows John. John. Captain Fantastic? Excuse me? Gnome, did you see Captain Fantastic? I was in it. You I, were? I, yes. I do a little acting on the side. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. They, they celebrate Gnome Chomsky Day in, in Captain Fantastic. Yes, Dr. Chomsky, you're I... speaking faster than I've ever heard you speak. Well, I'm on a lot of cocaine. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so, Alexi McCann. You and Voltaire. <laughs> what, uh, is a, a woman of color. Who and, is? Uh, Who? The, the woman that I'm talking about, the, the, the fired... The racist. I'm sorry, yeah. the bigot. Yes. Uh, the racist or bigot. I, I don't think that there's... Uh, I think you're splitting hairs a bit. But... Uh, and oh, she was, I don't... You can be bigoted against people not because of their race. So you can be a bigot without being a racist. And you can be a... Ra but does No, it, you can't... I think you're, if you're a racist, you're a bigot. It's a subsect I see. Sect of bigot. Fair. Like I can be bigoted against people from California. Fair, uh, and so she was fired by Condé Nast, which has gone through a lot of um, upheaval in the past couple of years. They had an editor at Bon Appetit who was caught doing brownface as an adult, which is bad. Woo! Yes, and they were accused of of putting all their uh, white uh, journalists on on air uh, on YouTube videos and. While the the uh, the writers of color were not um, given the same opportunities on camera, so they were already under a lot, a lot of scrutiny. So they fired her. But in all seriousness, do you, as a seventeen-year-old, I mean, things are different now. The things that I said when I was seventeen w were abhorrent, uh, but they were not captured um, on video and or, or shared, you know, 
but th- it was a different time. Like right now, do we forgive teenagers for being idiots? Well, it's a different time for teenagers right now. But are you saying, should we forgive people who said stupid shit who are adults now that were teenagers back then? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they're apologetic over it, then I I don't think it's... I don't think it's particularly fair to keep to hold someone responsible for something that they said when they were a teenager. I, I mean, and I say that from a position of white privilege and not the person who she was uh, making fun of. So maybe I'm not the right person to weigh in on it, but like everyone says stupid shit when they are a teenager. And my generation happens to be the first one who's, things that we said when we were a teenager are starting to show up and it's only going to get worse. It's going to get worse for, you know, the Gen Zers below me, like, um, you know, number one fuck King Yogi and um, everyone no, no, no. after Yogi that is really good about covering up his digital footprints. Um, well, but the thing is though, is that obviously like people in Yogi's generation and younger, maybe know better um which i don't right. know making excuses right. but the the climate and everything is different now than it was when she was she's 27 so 10 years ago like in 2011 like it's just it that doesn't mean you can be racist right right but it means you can be you can feel bad and apologize for being a stupid 17 year old without losing a job, what you are qualified for now as a 27 year old. Yeah. I don't know. That's where like, I I get like There's like, I have a beef with the language. Like she, like, I don't know what tweets she tweeted, but I'm sure it was like uh, unkind to someone. She was, she was, she was not using her better judgment in language, but like she does, what did she say? Like it, Laotian people are beneath me, you know, like that's like a racist statement. I feel like she was probably saying some stupid conversational shit that people say when they're not typing it into a, a tweet or saying it on a podcast. Uh, do and I, I can, yeah, read it. I want to yeah, know. Okay. So in um, September of uh, 2011, she said, now Googling how to not wake up with swollen Asian eyes. Uh, this, and then um, uh, oh, October of 2011. Give me a two out of 10 on my chem problem. Cross out all my work and don't expl- explain what I did wrong. Thanks a lot, stupid Asian TA. You're great. Uh, November 2011, outdone by Asian, hashtag what's new. I, I think Ooh, these are yucky. They're <laughs> yucky. Of course they're yucky. And, and, but as a teenager, you're, you're trying to find your voice and I'm not excusing all this stuff. You, you should be mortified and embarrassed by everything that you say as a teenager when you're trying to figure shit out. But I, I don't know if that's disqualifying for when when you're an adult um uh, hopefully like you know we if we only just drink whole milk and you know said all the the proper words we would be so in it uninteresting but we we tried and gassy that. and gassy yes <laughs> uh but, <laughs> but we you know the way that we we find our, our voice in comedy, the way that we push boundaries, like you know, and, and find the edges of comedy or or just things that are interesting, is by pushing boundaries. And as a yeah, she's a disrupt. She's a disruptor. I was just saying that earlier tonight that uh, it took Trump inciting you know five people's deaths and uh, what looked like Lollapalooza, but for fat white people at. Uh, at the uh, Capitol I saw building, one Asian person there. Just so uh, okay. Know. Just let, let, just don't shit on my point for one second. Okay, okay sorry, there was sorry, one sorry, Asian. Sorry, sorry. Um, to see where you got to kick, get kicked off Twitter. Like there was no line. This Twitter's new. You know, right. like we we don't have a set of a codified set of rules as to what you can do, what you can't do with this new technology. And he, as a as a you know as a patriot, 
And as a disruptor, he found that line. And uh, yeah, you can't really incite the overthrowing of uh, a democratic election with deaths. That gets you kicked off Twitter. So there's, you know, don't, we, we now know. So this girl is a part of us trying to like find what you can say about people. And if her TA was a fucking cunt, then she should have said, I don't like my TA. There's no need to bring her race into it. Or that... her body parts into it. What What was the body part? Oh, sorry. Oh, the eyes thing? No. Wait, what? I'm just saying what you just said. Oh, uh, I'm not listening to myself. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the statute of limitations on it is, but if you have children or if you are of that age, just know that despite what Snapchat says about things being temporary, everything is permanent. Everything is going to to linger out there uh, when you even when you think it doesn't. Um, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Well, I, I just have to say that uh, I don't remember uh, being 17. Um, Twitter wasn't invented when I was 17. Actually, the the wheel wasn't invented when I was yeah. 17, but... Um, sure. Oh, come on. That's, that was under... a little hacky there. If You should have brought it back a little bit further. Yeah, the Gutenberg press, John. Yeah, don't, don't be... You're not, like, as old as... Uh, you're not 100 old am I? Oh, I, I don't know, like 56? Old... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... Oh, yuck. Jesus it just Christ. got awkward. Does it feel yucky that you, like, guessed <laughs> it right? Oh, <laughs> Well, you got to look at the you. teeth. That's the only way. I've seen John's teeth up close, and you can be like, yeah, that's a 56-year-old. Is that why you asked about the prep? Because yeah. of the... Okay. You Don't count worry the, about you, it. You count the coffee rings on John's teeth to tell his age. Um, oh, and it's throw up. Oh. People, people <laughs> that was under... a really gross thing to say. And it's like not because it's John. It's just the idea of coffee rings. Yeah. <laughs> and also a little bit because it's John. John, go ahead. Just I think kidding. people under, I was going to say people <laughs> under the age of 18 are not legally responsible really for their actions, right? Uh, and uh, in a lot of times, and they shouldn't really, I mean, and I think that they're so irresponsible that they should basically be locked up and not allowed to do anything. Um, but I, I think it's, it's just, it really is just, first of all, don't be a dick. You know, that's a yes. good thing. Yes. Don't be a fucking dick. But also... Like whole, like seeking out shit that people said in when in their teens, and then using it to to get them fired and ruining their lives. I don't know. I mean, it, it is what she said was nasty, but she was she was what sixteen years old, seventeen. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. And I I don't. I mean, she she's not like a. It's not exactly a public figure. I don't know. No I, seventeen I feel, year old is. You know. Like very few. No, she wasn't. What well, she is not. I mean, she's barely a public figure now. Yeah. Right. How old is she? This is like the 2000, 2011? Hold on. Wait a minute. She's she's the the editor of Teen Vogue, and she's like, she's like in her twenties. Fuck her. <laughs> ah, now we get to it. Now we get to it. Oh my God! I just had a stroke. I laughed too hard. Um, yeah. And for, I just want to say, I when you say Conde Nast is in upheaval, it just really. I, it, it's cognitive dissonance because Condé Nast they make they make magazines like House, you know, and Home and Home and Garden and Golf and yeah, yeah. I, I, imagining them in upheaval is kind of uh, makes me think of you know uh, northern Iraq under ISIS, you know, uh, bombs. But they've been accused off. of like a lot of shit lately, yeah, John. So yeah. they kind of are in upheaval. And yeah, know, I know. But when you're yeah, there are people, there are people. Looks like this. You know what happened? Yeah, I heard what happened. How's that um, ad sale going? Oh, uh, some people are upset. Mm. But they should yeah. be in upheaval. Like Anna Wintour should be removed from Condé Nast. They influence the she culture, John. Her. It's she, not she, it's that simple. What? They influence the culture. It's not that simple. No, I know. I'm just saying that I, I think it's a, it's a staid kind of environment. That's why I imagine from uh, my experience watching The Devil Wears Prada. I can't imagine. I just I just find a hard time thinking of Condé Nast as upheaval. Yeah, no, I, that, that is a, we do have to frame the, our, our our outrage for sure. Uh, no, it's not it's not outrage. I don't. I think we can be outraged. I just I just think upheaval is is a sort of a violent word right. for such a quiet looking place. Right, but I, I think that there are so many things to get outraged at, and I don't want to waste too much on a woman who as a, a teenager 
said dumb shit, you know. Well, well I'm canceling my subscription what, what, what to uh, Condi or Team about. I mean, I, I haven't read it since uh, LC was uh, at the magazine. No, you haven't read it since this morning when you're on the shitter. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, John. What were you saying? Is is it still published, yeah, or is it, yeah, on, it is. just online? I, it might be just online, but it, it has a very large, a uh, very strong following, as I understand it. The, the, is that the magazine that that was uh, got all political for like yes. half a minute? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, on the other end of things, um, you've got a Mike Pesca, who's a, a journalist I really appreciate. He's sort of a moderate liberal sort of pundit, very outspoken white fella. Who um at, who Go on. had a, a podcast at Slate, <laughs> mm-hmm. and th- there was a discussion about uh, on Slack uh, within the Slate, uh, you know, Slack it, channel. Yeah, Slack channels uh, about whether the N word should can be used at all, and he was saying that uh, he was arguing that as that it c- could be used it, when you're being objective about the the usage of the word. And from that discussion, he was s- suspended. And, um, and, and this was in response to the, a New York Times science reporter who had... Oh, but not alcohol. Yeah. No. Costco brand Cos- sparkling water. Costco oh, LaCroix. So, so yeah. much sadness. But Yeah. Kirkland. I've never been this low. <laughs> so there was a, a science reporter from uh, the New York Times who, on a trip with a bunch of uh, teenagers, was discussing the use of the word, the, the N-word, and he spoke it out loud multiple times, and uh, because of that, he got fired. But he was discussing it in a, a sort of, in a context that was um, not... Using he was quoting the, Kendrick Lamar, you he, know. Yes, uh, he, was, he was quoting it, and Mike Pesca, who is white, was saying, like, was trying to... Def- not uh, Maybe he was trying to defend. I don't know the exact words. They haven't been released. But he was saying that in the, when you're examining the use of the word, uh, you should be able to use the word. And... Uh, and mm-hmm. I actually have done that on this podcast, and mm-hmm. it was n- very uncomfortable. Didn't but go I, well. I thought it was important because, like, there are racial slurs all over, and uh, I, I guess I could be fired for that. Um, but he was suspended for it. Meanwhile, Slate, other writers in Slate have used that term in their articles. So... Well, you know, is there a double standard? Is there a double standard? Hmm. Well, it sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I, I actually think that Mike Pesca is a very, uh, you know, he's provocative, but he's also very fair, and and I don't, I've never heard him. You know, I don't agree with everything he says, but I've never seen him be. You know, use terms like this in in any sort of forceful way. So, is you know, if I, I don't know, like what I don't know how you can be suspended for discussing whether you should use a term or not. I don't know how Slate still exists, but that's a <laughs> different yeah, topic. But, uh, like, what is like? Why, why do you say that? I'm just curious because I don't really know Slate. Oh, because I haven't I haven't uh, read it or, or heard anything interesting about it in like a decade. But that's that's because I'm just I don't have my finger on the pulse. So no, uh, no you don't have a pulse. Hey, hey, Steve. Steve no, 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 no. It's not. Steve, it's, it's, it's low, and he's on beta blockers, but it's there. You know, <laughs> he's on alpha blockers. Mm-hmm. No, I like I, I I have a sort of issue with how we're uh, using this one word and using it to suspend people and fire people, and also at the same time. Uh, I am happy to just say you can't say the word. It is forbidden. Uh, you know, happy. To, I, I, happy to. I, I'm. I like to read the room, and the room says, "Don't use that word at all." Yeah, yeah, but it's on half the music I listen to. Don't use that word. Yep. I, I 
Happy. I'm totally happy. happy to. I, I don't think it solves racism. I think it actually makes the word more powerful when you say, don't say it. Yep. But you know what? The millennials have spoken. They get real upset when you say it. So uh, that's why I wear a mask and I sit in my car and I just scream it at the top of my lungs along to whatever album I'm listening whoa, to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, what? keep that to yourself. I don't want well, to. Well, I'm, that- I'm singing along I to Megan the Stallion. I like I, she, she says that word. <laughs> Now, I, if those if those utterances come out of your mouth, I don't want to know it. If even if uh, you know if a tree in the woods hears it, then they're gonna they're gonna cancel you. I, okay. Did you hear Steve <laughs> was canceled by the forest? <laughs> I thought it was the trees. Just the trees? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like the forest. For it, the it's, trees. It, it is. You know, you. the market is saying I don't want to ever hear that word coming out of someone who's not of color. Like, okay. So that's do you, I'm fine with that. Like as a if you were a teenager now, like how do you how, how do you push boundaries? How do you explore where you know what's wrong and what's right if everything everything can be misconstrued as wrong and cancelable? Do you think it's necessary for teenagers to rebel? Yeah, I mean they've got plenty to do. They can just like become giant activists and try to sue the U S government for how it's yeah. handled climate change for the past 40 or 50 years. Yeah. That's what they're doing. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to be an asshole. No, I didn't say be an asshole, but it's like, no, but, but if you, you do want to be an what, asshole, what you're just saying, Marty is that teenagers need to have some way of being an asshole. That's acceptable. I didn't, I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying that like there, there are ways that, like as well, I'm putting words in your mouth. No, how dare you put words in my mouth? Wait, no, he just said he did. Oh, oh I see oh, what you did it. there. You win what a bit! What a bit! <laughs> uh, I I just like I just remember when I first learned that like oh I could swear amongst my friends as a fifth grader and nobody's there to punish me. Therefore, I'm gonna swear every single chance I can get just because. I can, you know. So you're worried that like a 15 year old is going to be hanging out with his friends and he's going to say uh, a, a racist term just to push the boundaries. And one of the, his friends is going to run to the school and say, he said this word. No, he's going to, it's going to be on, he's gonna it's going to be on Snapchat. It's going to be on, or he's going to, he's going to get canceled or kicked out of school. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I guess that that's the, the reality is that that's a possibility and everyone should warn their child that that's going to happen. But is it I mean, happening? I, I think it's probably just silly to compare your teenager experiences to those of teenagers now because the world is completely fucking different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, couldn't, I can't even compare mine. How, what was so, uh, but and and uh, here's the other thing: is that you just told the story about this this guy from Slate who you like his writing, and the story is that he was having a conversation about the N word. And saying that it's possible to use the N word in conversations about the N word, and as a result, he was suspended. And I suspect there was something more to it than that. And if there wasn't anything more to it than that, then Slate is fucked. Okay. Yeah. And and it's like we we can't speculate because we don't we haven't seen the the transcripts. But um... no, we can speculate. In fact, you just did. Okay. Well, we can't say definitively. <laughs> Welcome we to Sylvain's it. court. Uh, oh, uh, the I worst just... TV judge ever. <laughs> <laughs> he actually knows the law. <laughs> Damn you, John. Every time. Yeah. Um, no, I, I trust me. I would not want to be a fucking teenager right now. Yeah. I, I did some terrible, awful, awful go things. Go on, go on. Tell us. What the hell is that? I murdered I murdered a hobo just to see him die. I just wanted to see what it, the light go out in his eyes. And so we murdered this guy. You know, we held him and underneath the water and the Charles There's no light were, oh, in anyone's eyes. It's no, just, no, no. I just did dumb things, but I, you know. Yeah. It, it, if I were 17 right now, I'd probably be super canceled because I'd, you know, I'd be filming it and sharing it with everyone. Cause <laughs> but I'm here's an idiot. the other thing that was really interesting, like, and and I don't know if you guys, um, by you I mean Cassandra, were subject to this, but like I received a fair amount of racial slurs slung at me as a teenager, uh, and 
I never felt outrage. I mean, it was a little shocking that Chuck Yetzo would call me a chink and a gook. Um, but that's I, so Chuck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like the, the name Chuck Yetzo says it all. But um, I, I, I didn't even think that like oh i should report it and cancel him and get him suspended and and i don't think that would have ever happened uh so it was a different definitely a different time and i, I don't know well you were probably quite smart you realized that he's coming from a place of ignorance and fear and that's why he's using those words and there you you can't solve those problems so you right. just moved on yeah I feel like any sort of racial things that got hurled at me were all done with like the with love? no with the white people who are doing them <laughs> feeling like they were in some sort of safe space because my skin is white so they would wow. make jokes about my ethnicity and things like that but like be like but you're cool you're in on it right right because I think like well, it's, I don't think, I know that like a group of white people together feel safe together to get these things out of their system that they wouldn't normally say out loud. So then when you're white, but then also have something that they want to make fun of, then you become the butt of the joke uh, in a way that you might not normally. <laughs> but I mean, it's microaggressions, yeah. you know? No, it, and, it, it and at the time up. you don't see like that it's fucked up. You're yeah. kind of just like, huh, that's funny. I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I like Chuck Yetzo is one of the few names I remember from high school, you know, because he was the fucker who hurled racial epithets at me. I'm sorry. Bigoted epithets at me. Yeah. He has no, no power racial. over you. You're racial. I just no. You just. Yeah. Yeah. It's racial. No, no. Way no, to be Chuck Yetzo. doesn't have to be racist. That's all. That's oh, all my subject. Oh, OK. All right. Fair. Fair. I'm bigoted against podcast hosts. Uh, so Why, John? I don't have to have a reason to be bigoted. Just okay. because I'm I'm old. I got I you know you reach fifty, you just get start getting bigoted against things. Um, Shitty. Yeah, it is. It's all it comes along with the aches and pains in the morning. <laughs> he welcomes them. <laughs> My gotta, back hurts gotta, this morning. It's the goddamn juice. No, oh, it makes me feel juice. alive. I, I blame the uh, the people who uh, live in New Hampshire. Still, <laughs> them and their fire. Yeah, I, I I think it's fucked up. I think you know a seventeen year old should not be accountable. But you know that that those tweets are there forever, dum dums. Yeah, I mean you shouldn't you, you should be accountable to some degree, but then you also have to show uh, you know some sort of repent repentance or or, or regret. Uh, which, but but like also like she's an adult now and she's in a position yeah. of power. Yeah. You know you can delete tweets, right? Um, yeah, but there's the Wayback Machine or whatever it's called. You know, you know some people, Steve. I don't even know how to tweet. You know, deleting <laughs> a tweet is like another step after. Like I keep I writing on tweet. a piece of paper and I shove it at the computer and go tweet this and it doesn't do yeah. anything and I'm oh. yeah I yeah. I'm out in the backyard. Talking to birds. Yeah. Uh, so. I don't know. Yeah. John, what, how's uh, um, your class going? What did you show them today? Oh, uh, I'm on spring break. That's why I'm not wearing a shirt. Letting my, because I'm, I'm on spring break. You're shirtless? Yeah. John is shirtless, but. I'm shirtless. I'm at Lake Havasu right now. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Spring break. I'll be, I'll be yellow shots in a second. <laughs> Something about John shirtless on a sea dew is just like that's a magic so image in my head. Yes, it's highly is that, erotic. Is that why you need the prep? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I would definitely hang out with John in a jet ski for sure. Yeah, thanks, Cassandra. You got good jet ski energy. Oh, you know, cool. All right, here, here's a, here's I have a question for you. Guys. <laughs> you know, cool is that what you said? <laughs> you know, cool, not me, and you know that I'm cool, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah, with a jet ski. Fuck okay. yeah! All right, so they got that that boat off of out of the Suez Canal. Finally. And, yeah, and they talked about it, and they the name of the the boat was the Ever Given. Did that bother you? <laughs> it just seemed like a dumb. I thought name. it was Ever Green. No, it's Ever Given. Mm. Oh, whoops! We and, said Ever Green on the podcast. Trashy, and then, trashy. 
there's another another one that's called Navig Eight Aralnaldo. And I mean, these boats have these really dumb names. Um, but yeah, you know, why did, why, and like people boats. who own boats, they all have like you know little pithy punny names. You know, yeah. like what? Well, why do boats need names? I don't. My car doesn't have a name on it. Well, because you, your, your car doesn't doesn't can cost you like seven thousand dollars a year just to ha have. You don't know my car. You don't know what I have. It's a super oh, well, cross track. It's a super. Okay. Like, I've seen your car, and yeah, you're, back you're, uh, about a year ago, I saw it, and uh, I can tell that it's not a hole in the water like a boat is. We used to have a, a boat called the um, the Indecisive because we couldn't come up with a name. My father had a, had sailboats. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what? What do you guys have any good boat names? No. My grandfather. To with topic. My grandfather <laughs> named it after my sister, and my other sister and I were like, "Hey, hey!" Which sister? I'm not going to tell you. Then you're just going to use it against me. No, uh, he called it the Jessica. The Je mm. See that, and that's why she's where she is. That's but why she's you, very successful, and I'm just a fucking podcaster. Martin. Martin would not be a good name for a boat. Marty, hey, jump on the Marty. Yeah, no, I can see why he did that. All Jessica's right, a good enough. name. For All right. But like, if the Titanic didn't have a name, it just would have been like that big boat that was going to, where was it going? It was going, it was going to New the New Lusitania. York. Was it going to New York or was it going to, to Ireland? Yes. One of, Which it, way it was, was it going? I don't even know. I think it was its maiden voyage from England. All right. I thought it left from New York. But like okay. when a, the, a plane crashes, they're not like, old oh, Bessie went down with 150 passengers dead. Like, it's just... Uh, yeah, they American don't name Air. planes. They don't name planes. Planes are fucking way more expensive than boats. It's true. It was going to New York City from England. England. You're right, John. I was right again. God, it gets so tiring and old hey, to be John. right all the time. Hey, John. What? You know it. You know it. <laughs> That's what I would name my boat. You know right it? all the time. Right all the time. Uh, my wife just put a Black Lives Matter type sign in front. You know, the one that says like science is real and Black Lives yeah. Matter mm -hmm. and all that there. In this house, the rainbow one. Yeah. 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 She put that in front mm -hmm. of our house today. And do you know why? No. Why? The, the house next door is for sale and she's just convinced that douchebags are going to want to move in so she wants to make sh she wants them to think that we're like oh shit the one with the pool yeah well, how much is it uh, <laughs> you don't want to know uh, well if, if it's it, gonna be so expensive yeah it, it's basically like a couple walked by and they looked at it and they started poking their phone and i was like oh it's this amount of money and they're like oh and they walked away uh oh yeah so I'm just convinced that Hollywood douchebags or internet douchebags or Instagram douchebags, some type of douchebag is going to move there and they're going to have Instagram parties nonstop and I'm going to be miserable. But my wife mm -hmm. wanted to ward them off by saying that we're whoa Progressive. Yeah. But that's not going to stop anybody. I was like, we should put a rebel flag and a Chinese national flag just to confuse them and just be like, oh, they're crazy people who live next door. And, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But... So, um, uh, I just... I Okay, never mind. No, go ahead, John, go. No, I, 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 just, got a, I just got a text from somebody. It's a different topic, and I, I didn't want to... Like, no, no, I'm done. Up. I'm done with this topic. Well, I think, first of all, I have to say that I think that's a really smart thing to do. If you're afraid the douchebags are going to move in, put that sign. It's going to reduce the douchebaggery uh, probably by about 10%. Although most douchebags would probably look at that sign and say, yeah, man, that's cool. I like that as long as they know their place or whatever. Should I just like walk back and forth in front of my house, like covered with cats going, <laughs> covered with cats? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. I think I, I found it. That's one way of keeping people from moving in at all. <laughs> if that's your goal, you can just depress the, yeah. the property values yeah. in, in the area. And then squat in the house. Yeah. And then you just you buy that house. Damn, Marty, this house is tight. 
a fucking right? good idea. It's Man. it's crazy. It's got okay. Th- just so you, uh, they have a pool house, and under the pool house is a garage that has like these twenty or fifteen foot ceilings. That's like like sixty feet long. The guy who lived there wanted to build an airplane in the space underneath the pool house. So that's that's. Oh, I was like, oh, we could have the podcast there, and but no. I don't have any this money. Shit. Yeah, I don't dang have the it. money. Yeah, yeah. But I almost have enough. <laughs> I'm only off by a couple million. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Is Christ. it is it over a million? Yes, it is. Over yes. A yes. Everything everything in LA is like over a million. Yes. It's a crazy time, and yet people are moving out. It's 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 a the weirdest thing. I don't understand it at all. Like they're moving out or moving in. In the, in the past year on my street, there have probably been like five or six families that have moved out. And they're, yeah. Why do you think it's crazy that they're moving out if they can, if they can, if uh, BlackRock, uh, you know, uh, hedge fund is buying everybody's house for a million dollars? I, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Because that's what's happening. Is it? So I'm Yeah, there's a lot of speculation. BlackRock. Yeah, BlackRock and other other hedge funds are, are speculating in the real estate market like crazy. Oof. They're buying houses and flipping them. All right. I'm going to. Which why? is not a good. Why? Yeah, what does that mean? Money. Well, it what it means is they they recognize that people that it's a bubble basically, or it's they recognize that they could make money and by getting into it they're heating up the market and what they're doing is they're creating a bubble by in, investing all of this. They're pulling inventory out of the marketplace, so the demand, mm. which is already sky high, shoots even higher because they're buying low and selling high. Yeah. Yeah. But these aren't, they can't even, you can't even buy low. Yeah. That, right. Right. And then if you sell too high and there's no one who can afford. Right. That's what, that, other than your other. That's, that's what happens with a bubble. At some point, some, all of a sudden goes everybody to, goes, hey, wait a minute. Uh, wait, it's, oh, it's, it's, that's it's, what it's, people it's, say it's when they real say estate bubble? chicken. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I saw something on TikTok where they were like, um, boomers bought their houses like yeah, however long ago for like three dollars and now they're yeah. selling their houses for you know cash for like a shit ton of money, like you know, I don't know, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars or more. Yeah. Um, and then they're buying new houses with that money because uh they live longer and they're buying them in cash. Which then beats out people like me, who you know that would be like a starter home, you know. But they're buying them with cash, and like I would have to get a loan, or you know, other or millennials. Three loans, or yeah, and so they're basically like fucking over millennials because they're living longer, downsizing into starter homes with cash. Uh, this is why I don't wear a mask and I, am, I have not been vaccinated. We need to take the boomers down. Did you see that SNL song that they did on last yes. Saturday? It was so it funny. Was the, and the best so the... fucked up. Yeah, what was it? It was, true, it was, it was the, that, the boomers all got vaccines. The boomers got vaxxed and uh, they were all happy about it. And uh, going out to restaurants and reading the menu with a flashlight. Uh, it was just, it was great. Fucking boomers. Wait, it was so, the only good thing about Saturday Night Live. So, Cassandra, you've got your vaccine, correct? Yes. Uh, I have both of my shots. I am oh, I'm good does, to go, baby. How does that feel? Mm, scared to yeah. still go outside. Yeah, but that's good. Um, but don't you feel like a, a, a modicum of immunity or, 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 or protection? I mean, I feel relieved yeah. uh, that I don't have to, you know, I, when I went to buy this great Kirkland sparkling water, um, I only wore one mask instead of two to go into Costco and Which my Costco? crowd anxiety. Well, of course, the one near you, uh, Steve, like the one across the street from you. If everybody wants to go to Steve's house, you just, when you leave the Costco, you just <laughs> That's a sick neighborhood. Up. We were, my roommate and I were driving by. We were like, this would be pretty tight to live right around here. <laughs> Steve has a really cute place. Well, uh, yes, that is the Costco that I went to. And John, you you've had both of yours as an educator, right? No, have you had no, any I'm, of yours? I'm getting mine on the April. For the We're talking about April the Northridge 1st. Costco, right, Steve? You live in Northridge. That's right. Yeah, Rancho <laughs> Cucamonga. Off nice. the one one th- where the one thirteen meets the seven. Uh, yes, 
Uh, mm-hmm. El Toro mm-hmm. Y. Um, mm-hmm. John, mm-hmm. you're getting yours on the 15th? No, on the 1st. Oh, the 1st. Sorry. Um, Jesus. Jesus well, now the fifteenth is when this, is, when this the, is the worst deposition I've ever been to. <laughs> okay, can you strike that from the record? This is the best deposition ever. Um, <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited for everyone else to get their vaccines so I can start like you know doing things. Right now, I just feel like I can do stuff all by my lonesome. Uh, Steve, have yeah. you, you haven't gotten yours yet. I have one. You had one, and 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 that's enough to go to Palm Springs and have. Uh, Gay unprotected sex. gay unprotected sex gay with sex. men uh, at the at the club yeah. no, no, hunters I'm, I'm talking about the, which is on palm canyon drive <laughs> i'll be there the, the probably about midnight tonight after i leave here i'm at, talking uh, about covid sh- not prep oh sorry 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 uh, i have one pfizer shot and i'm uh, signed up for my second one so a couple weeks or something yeah it doesn't yeah. i'm just i i'm so excited for that uh i, yeah, I, I feel not, absolutely about nothing. how we're vaccinated though marty i beg your pardon make, make other people feel bad well, no, I, 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 you know, right now in in California, they're opening, uh, or in LA County, I don't know if it's statewide, but they're opening uh, vaccinations on the fifteenth for everybody. Uh, my second second vaccination is on the sixteenth, so I'm afraid that there's going to be a huge line, but that's okay. Your sexual vaccine vaccination. My sexual vaccination. Ooh, that is a band name if I've ever heard one. Sexual, sexual vaccination, vaccination. Yeah. or Sex AKA vax. prep. Um, Oh, but that will happen. Yeah, in a couple of weeks, and so I'm, I'm I'm thrilled about it. And I, you know, I just got very lucky. I I it's happening all over right now, and I I didn't want to talk about it because it just felt so weird that it just happened. But then I, everybody I know is just like, oh yeah, well, I just went to this place and they had extras, and yep. it, you know, my sister is like, I'm going to Long Beach now. Uh, they. They only have two thousand people signed up, but they have four thousand vaccines. Come on over to Long Beach, and I was like, "All right, got it." And so it's like in California. We're Did she get her vaccine because she has a boat named after her? Is that what why she yeah, was able to get one? Yeah, it was only people who have boat boats named after them. <laughs> That's you know, tier like, one B. Martin for boat. Yeah, nobody has Mar- a boat. Mar- named Mar- Martin. The maritime class. Please go back home. <laughs> go back. Go back. And you have to land. bring the boat with you. To yeah. prove that it's named after you. Uh, you pull up in a like a little. Do you like have a- your paper? <laughs> <laughs> That's why people listen to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh, I have a friend, just a friend who's who's helping out with vaccines in North Carolina. You know, a friend, not anybody I'm necessarily related to, and. Uh, he was telling me that when they run out of uh, patients at the end of the day, they go out, he and his other volunteers who happen to be in North Carolina, go out and say, uh, we have some extra vaccines. And the uh, reaction from the people, that they're doing this in a mall, so there's lots of sort of people hanging around. And they're not masks. And they, they say, you want to get a vaccine? And they say, no, I'm not getting that. And it's very disheartening. So well, that's how the other What state is this? North Carolina. Hmm. Mm. That sounds very South Carolina. I, that, that's not my North Carolina. I don't. I don't it's well. Southern North Carolina. Yeah, I was about to say North Carolina is a big state. I uh, ran into a firefighter friend of mine, and he uh, bounced straight off. Right. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you were doing so well, John. You were doing so well. Right. Were... No, that was a fucking awesome joke. You leave him alone. That was great. So. Thank you. <laughs> Um, he was saying, like, you know, most of... Spring <laughs> break agrees with you, John. You're in fuego tonight. You're just, like, you're all one piston is firing. <laughs> that one-stroke engine oh, inside your brain. He's got his party solid purple shirt on. He's ready to go. <laughs> John, I've never seen you wear Mardi Gras beads. Break. They, they look good on you. You're dressed like a Teletubby. They really it's draw the cute. attention away from your neck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you have more gold rings on now than normal? <laughs> yeah, because I'm on spring break. Nice. Yes, that's oh, when right. the gold comes out. I want that wealth, Anthony? Thank you for telling me that my mic was low. Now it's I, it feels super high, uh, and I. Right, feel your so- mic is always low. Yeah, I All can't right. hear you ever. All right, sorry. I'm I'm doing my best. It's it's not the mic. It's me. Turn your volume down and your gain up. You know what I'm saying? So Wait, what? You, what? Man, you. you. <laughs> You ran into a firefighter and yeah, oh yeah, and he was saying that like 
when they go, <laughs> you know, most of most firefighters mostly go on because like right now everybody's home is pretty well protected from fire in general. Uh, obviously, like there are exceptions, but most of the calls are medical. And so they go in and they fucking duct tape themselves and gear up and they PPP themselves up and they go in there. And then he was like, yeah, but then like at the end of the day, like he's my age and he's like all the young guys, they, they just go off and, and go to, to have like have a Sioux and, and party it up. And then they come back with COVID. And then he was saying that like, 53% of firefighters and firefighters are first responders. They were the first ones to get offered uh, the vaccine. Only 53% of them agreed to get it. And the other you mean nationwide or uh, no, in, in LA? LAFD and the, that, that's oh, really LAFD. Yeah. And he's like, and the rest of them, he, and he, he was telling me like, they're like, I don't want Bill Gates tracking me. You know, I don't oh. want. Yeah, he, and it's Bill like, Gates is already tracking. I, of course, of course. Everyone, Amazon, it's not Bill Gates; it's Jeff Bezos. But is here's the interesting him. thing that he said: is like, but then, if they're in a situation where they're like, there's a group of people, and they're like, oh, every, you know, the vaccines are over here, you know, everyone's getting them. Like those guys who said, like, I'm never going to get vaccine vaccinated, will be like, oh, okay, I'll get vaccinated. So like, it, it's not really rooted in any sort of. Uh, strong belief. It's it's about groupthink, and, and they're just like, all right, I'll I'll just go with the group, you know. And so their whatever their group does, they they will do. And I just found that so interesting because I don't want to paint this group of people with one brush, but it no, no, doesn't no. sound like groupthink. It sounds like dumbness. But but I think that's how most people are uh, it, it, to some degree, Dumb. like. Yeah, because we basically don't want to think. We want to to have somebody else do the work for us, and that that is a, a like a reflex that that saves us energy. You know, in the if, if you you know if the group goes one way, then we go one way because somebody in the group saw a predator, and we don't have to go do any sort of evaluation of is there a predator or not. We just go. Are that you way. confusing humans with starlings? Uh, oh, yes. you're you're describing What's emergence. A starling, starling. It's a bird. You it's know the bird. birds fly around in patterns like that. Yeah, but there's but no that's in general. There's no like, there's no one leader. The birds are not led by a architect bird. They just all move as sort of one organism. Yeah, and Will avoid be predators. Beings. Yeah, but but that's how that's how individuals in a group work. I mean, they we look. The initial thing we see is how is the group reacting, and then we make an evaluation. And not everybody makes the same uh, well thought evaluation, you know. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, it, it actually, when he said that, like, oh yeah, some of these these guys, when you know, they'll be all blustery and and say that they're not going to get the vaccine, but then when it's offered and everybody else is getting it, they will just get it. That actually gave me hope. You know, <laughs> that actually made me think, OK, all right, these people aren't their uh, resistance to vaccines isn't rooted in any sort of uh, belief system or knowledge. It's just it's about just instinct and knee jerk dumbness, you know. Yeah. So that that gave me hope. Yeah. Yeah, you mean well, not that, that hope was not to telegraphed to us through that story. No, it's not. It's not. But, <laughs> you're, not an but it should be. you're definitely not an inspirational. I know, speaker. but fair enough. <laughs> I'm more fair depressed enough. now than when you started I know. talking. I, no offense. No, no, no offense. No, but because like it just made me think. Oh, I don't have to talk that person into it. I just have to get everybody around that person to to get the vaccine. Yeah, uh, I would love to know if people are against the vaccine who will not get the vaccine uh, just email us nooner podcast at gmail.com there no judgment like i understand like there's a lot of crazy new technology i watched a, a video from the vlog brothers of uh, uh, hank green about about it and it's crazy it's crazy new technology that has so many layers to it uh it's amazing that there was a, there was this crazy confluence of of technology that hit right at the time when the this happened if this happened a year before we would be fucked 
Um, but it happened right now, and we're benefiting from it, hopefully. And hopefully there's not going to be some sort of negative repercussions for uh, adopting the mRNA uh, vaccines that the, the Pfizer and Moderna uh, uh, vaccines are, are employing. I do know but, someone through someone who is not getting it. And uh, for what reason? Uh, they have uh, they think the mainstream media is touting it and they want to they're just not comfortable and uh, this upset this person i know who knows them and i said well you know i uh, have them come and bring us you know a powerpoint presentation and take me through the science of why you think right it, it's not going to work because I hate to tout my friend's book, but I've read it twice now. Oh, is this uh, Seth Manukin? Seth Manukin's book. And he's a very smart dude. And he didn't know if you should get vaccinated. Like it, it came out during the whole Andrew Wakefield uh, vaccines give you autism. And you read his, when she, like, read his book. I'm, I don't get a, a percentage. Oh, oh right. <laughs> All right. I get like a, t a little taste. All I right. dip my beak a little he's bit. He's tiny but, pharma. Uh, read it. I read it and I went, okay. I don't need to think about vaccines ever again. It is the most in-depth, deep fucking dive nightmare of a book. I have told him to his face, like, I, I don't know who you're writing that book for because it's too fucking hard to read. But when I got done with it, I went, everyone should get vaccinated. It shouldn't even be a choice. It is a fucking miracle. We're all alive and not dead. Yeah. And I can, you know, you want to talk about uh, mercury? I can, I, I know everything about mercury. I could tell you the whole story. It, it, it was eight chapters. It was a thousand pages. You want to talk about autism? Great. Let's. I'll. I'll. T like. I, I have the the facts now. And and oh, you so sound this person just like the, the QAnon. You know, I have the facts. Well, because well, uh, because this guy's a science writer, so he he went through this process to prove that you should get vaccinated. He didn't just read a bunch of shit on 9chan and was like, It's yep, 12 this is chan it. now. It's all the chans. Yeah. So um, if she wants to, oh, it's a she. If she wants to do the science and prove to me that you shouldn't get vaccinated because she's done, you know, the double blind studies and everything, I'm like, great. But it's just like one of these... And, I just don't. I don't feel comfortable. Right. Like, and by the way, your choice. But shut the fuck up. If you if you cannot. No, it's not your choice. You affect the rest of the herd. I, but right, like this is where I'm a fascist about it. Like, yeah, no, 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 no. You keep hearing these. You know, like I, I did like the 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 one a hundred years ago. This the I don't. Can we call it a Spanish flu or do we have say the? It started in Kansas. The it's West, the Kansas the, flu. We call it the Kansas flu, okay? The Western European flu. You can call it the Spanish flu. I mean, want. it's like, how many people died? Like 40 million worldwide? Yeah. It was like, like... 20 million. Yeah, and people are like, 500,000 people died. Like, uh, that's nothing. Like, well, we're, the, we're uh, well over... I mean, compared to right, not just like 100 years proportionally ago. Proportionally, we're very... We're much lower, but also... Here's one thing that, that I was thinking about is how much worse would it have been if there, and, and this is specifically to the U.S., and, and this is very ethnocentric of me, but if there was no DoorDash, if there was no uh, Postmates, if there was no Netflix, uh, all, all these like like touchless services, how much worse would this pandemic have been? And... I, I don't want to give more credit than than is due, but it, we benefited so much in terms. Just give us a thumbs up live. Yeah. So, but back to my point, like <laughs> we spec. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I, I just think that we were like there was a confluence of of things that really helped us out. Uh, that yeah. we're, we're in a, a time and also the technology that allowed the mRNAs to, to develop. Like it, it, just watching that video today, I was like, oh, how fucking lucky are we that they solved a bunch of problems of that were plaguing yeah. the mRNA. That and we had crazy. great leadership. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 I mean... Uh, we totally beat that hundred million by whatever day Biden said. Like this is kind of amazing that the centralized 
you know, government got this all whipped up and it's, it's kind of fantastic how well it's going in well, terms of vaccinating, know, like managing, managing the federal government, you know, takes a little bit of effort. And if you're just not doing that at all, you know, just put, just pushing your weird ass agenda and trying to make money for yourself rather than low, sort of low flush to toilets are number one, number two, you know, vaccinate the, the, the country. That's no, I probably... don't think it was number two. I think number I think going on uh, getting as many uh, foreign governments to go to Trump properties was number two. <laughs> Golfing <laughs> himself was number three, but really was number one. Mm -hmm. And um, talk to Kid Rock on the phone. That was number four. And attacking uh, and insulting every president has to do that, though, in That's new ways really on fair. Twitter, trying to get more and more higher ratings for himself uh, was number four, five and six. And then way down at the bottom was, you know, make sure that people know that this thing is not my fault. And it's everything is on China, China's fault. It's China's fault. And, and it's the Democratic uh, uh, mayors and governors. And mm. I, in, 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 by the way, he, I did the best thing ever. And then there was like, well, what about setting up systems to vaccinate people? I, I, I'm too busy. Sure. Yeah. I don't think he really was set up to deal with a sort of big crisis. Yeah. And I, I mean, we're lucky because if he had <laughs> act, acted even remotely. We're talking about Pence, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. If, yeah. He, if, if Trump had actually. Well, I'm not going to shit on my fucking former president. No, no, never mind. I, I, well, I don't want to talk about him anyway. Uh, you, know what I, you, you know what I'd like to, I'd like to get uh, your take on, um, speaking of Saturday Night Live, did you guys see Jack Harlow? Do you know who Jack Harlow is? He was no. the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Oh, he, you know what I did? I it watched. Was awful. It. I mean, he was just like so horribly awful. It was really, really awful. And I was just wondering why anybody would pay money for his music or even let him exist. So we watched. My roommate and I watched, and we saw him pop up in the Pete Davidson sketch, and we're like, oh, shit, that must be the musical guest. Like, yeah. he's pretty good, and he kind of looks like little Dicky, so we're like, oh, tight. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> then he did his performance, and his performance, like, the first, like, minute about it, where he's just rapping about his friends playing Xbox, was like, yeah. well, uh, we had really high hopes for this, and so far, his lyrics are really shitty, and he's not very clever, Right. And then he switched to the song, which was is popular on TikTok. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I I agree with you, John. And because he did his his second song, which was more singing, with the guy from Maroon Five, which is rarely ever a good sign. And um. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, what? A, what a get! Oh, he's he was available. I have a genuine <laughs> question. Yes. Like. Because Marty's not here. I'm right yeah. here. I'm listening to everything. Oh. I, I'm trying to keep the the bandwidth open because I've had bandwidth issues. I don't well, know why. Tyson says is your is your wife ago, is your so. wife binging uh, Selling Sunset right now or something? Uh, she's been yammering like three feet away from me, uh, nonstop. And yeah. my apologies. Does she understand how audio works? I don't know. I oh. I can't. Yeah. When is she going to come on? I have so many questions for her. You well, we just saw her. I did? Yeah. A couple when? weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, JP She's Cutter so nice. wants to know if anybody watched the QAnon documentary. Uh, I, know I, can't, I can't give, I can't give no. the, the crazy any more of my bandwidth. I, I'm just, I'm over it. What's it called? It's called, um, anyone start the Q documentary yet? No, don't watch it. What's it on? Don't, it's on HBO, but don't watch it. Okay. Um, so, all right, let me just get this. Uh, Marty, Cassandra had a question. She asked, she asked, she was asking a serious question, one. and you weren't there. And okay. then you said, no, I'm here. So what was your question, Cassandra? You forgot. Oh, gosh, I just don't even remember. <laughs> So yeah. on uh, the John, Tonight Show last night, what they, was I had, talking about? they had this huge TikTok dance chick on, and she like showed Jimmy Fallon all the hot TikTok dances. Yeah. Is she the and one who was... passed away? No, it was last night, so she's <laughs> probably still alive. And uh, it did not go well. Was it JoJo Siwa? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And it was she's like, like a YouTube. No, it wasn't her. It, she this was a TikTok, and she she's like, I'm gonna go through all the dances. And he was holding little signs behind her of all the dances. And it was like watching the old guard and the new guard kind of meet each other and not know what to do with each other. It was super fucking awkward. And I was like, what why does the Tonight Show need TikTok? And why does TikTok need the Tonight Show? It just it, it is was so it bizarre. It is very weird when you see a, a, tic, a social media person on traditional TV. It, it's weird. It's like because they don't know the the host doesn't know who they're interviewing, and there's no. They weren't. They weren't interviewing. She was just dancing. But it was like, who thought of this? And I like to watch this person on my phone, where they they're using all the, the the tricks of what you can do with TikTok, and it's fun. And and they didn't have the music because of clearances, so it was just like some random beat. It was just, it felt like a bunch of out of touch producers. Like TikTok's big, let's get a star and put that it. Sounds with, shitty. Yeah, it was really like, why do we need the Tonight Show? What's uh, what is well, this? You know What's what? happening? Why do we need? Uh, the difference is like right now we can choose what we want to see and it always amazes me when you're like oh this person who made a uh, a video about like how i made a cake got 3 million views whereas Rachel Maddow got 1 and a half million views you know it's like how great is that that we there, it's a democratizing thing i know that there are a lot of issues with youtube but i just love that like the market gets to speak in a way um, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but like YouTube is like uh, social media is collaborative. Like the YouTube Ratatouille musical is awesome, and Explain that's like what a bunch that is? of. Well, there isn't a musical of the movie Ratatouille, and a bunch of people love that movie, as do I. And they like all wrote songs and perform, and they did it like uh, like a hive mind. There wasn't one person doing it, and everyone, you know, contributed. And like it's the best art ever. Yeah, it's really good. And TV is not that way. TV is just, it's one way and it's exclusionary and it's usually talented people. Although, I don't know, Jimmy Fallon doesn't really make me laugh. But it was just weird seeing those two worlds together. Like if you saw Jimmy Fallon on TikTok, you'd be like, what? What is going on? Why is he here? Well, celebrities, I'm guaranteed Jimmy Fallon's show has a TikTok, but okay. Yeah, but like he's just doing Jimmy Fallon, but like, all right, I'm doing my my TV stuff on TikTok. Like, I don't. Think you know who's good is Jack Black. Jack Black has really amazing. figured out how to do he's, TikTok well. One, like one or two boomers have figured it out, but most of them are like. He's not a boomer. He's a Gen Xer. Everyone's a boomer. Anyone who's not Cassandra's age is a boomer. Even John. No, I mean Gen Xers are. I guess you guys are there. <laughs> hanging on it sounds so ups- sad about it it's like oh it's cool john what was the marquis de Sade like was he a nice guy yeah he was a sweetheart yeah, yeah he was totally a sweetheart he'd uh he'd always send say, me a christmas card he'd write it with his own poop my penis. what <laughs> he'd send me a christmas card he'd write it he'd sign it with his own poop yeah Yucky. Yep, and then we're gonna dip into the mail sack. Mail sack, mail sack. I didn't have any control over that. I I I had no control over that whatsoever. I couldn't control the volume at all. That's Kevin at the home base going, enough, enough. Just get to the Uh, That was great. Steve Owens, eight emails. Oh, no, no. Steve Owens just has one email. Hmm. He says, Read Marty, first, you know I love you. At least I hope you know that. So keep in mind uh, as I say this this is like saying, I'm not racist, but um, oh god! No, no, Who's no. no. Who's, Ma- wait, Marty, what? please re- read this before speaking it. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. This is Steve Owens. It's actually, sure? I've re- read it ahead, and, 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 and it's Steve Owens. Like, pay oh, yeah. yeah. Have you read it? Yeah, when I just said uh, that I read it, that means I read it. <sighs> John's on a seven-second delay. Yeah, has nothing to do, nothing I, to sorry, do with sorry, this sorry, podcast. John. He's sorry, just sorry, on a seven-second delay. Something more interesting was happening while you were talking. <laughs> like a butterfly was doing. No, it wasn't even that interesting. It was just more interesting than what you were saying. But right. please continue. Go on. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna chalk that up to Steve Owens' writing, not not me reading. Um, oh, perfect! My chicken's done. Bye. bye. <laughs> uh, Steve, this has nothing to do you. with you. This is all about me. 
With all due respect, you are incorrect. Last week you said something to the effect of the David Dobrik story is much more compelling to talk about than whether the uh, whether or not the Nooner show is ending. Literally nothing is more compelling to the people who have been listening to the show for 10 plus years. Not 10 plus years. It'll be 10 soon enough. Um, yes. So, Steve, thank you. Like, there's... N- like, this is, means a lot to me. And the mayor the Shaw, oh, so he goes on and says, the mayor thought that the show, nay, my friends won't be making deposits in my ear pussies on a weekly basis. Okay, you're not making your case. But he says, the mayor thought that the show won't be making deposits in my ear pussies on a weekly basis is terrible. Uh, imagine if Cougar never mentioned to you... Um, that he was moving to Texas until he left. How hurt would you have been? You frustrate the shit out of me sometimes, but I love you. Pre, please, uh, pretty please, let us know if the show is going away. The, the, this, my frustration that, that came out was because I mentioned this in confidence because it was an idea that I've been thinking about, and we will continue thinking about it. I'm going to discuss it with my fellow pod Merps, um, because you know this is a group effort, and you know even though I have this mic and this one dumb account, like it doesn't mean that that I control it. Th- there are a lot of factors that that contribute to the success of this podcast, and so please stay tuned. We're gonna figure it out. We're we're talking about stuff and we, we just want to make sure that we can deliver the same amazing content and perhaps improve it as, as we go, lo- go along. Um, Steve goes on to say, no, everyone go check out Fascination Street Podcast. That's a thing. Fascin- Fascination Street Podcast. Do you, are you guys familiar? Yeah, I've, I've been on it uh, and I really appreciated uh, being on it and it's, uh, it's always very interesting and uh, thank you, Steve. Um, but uh, if you say deposits in my ear pussy, I'm going to stop doing this podcast. <laughs> uh, that is fair. That that is absolutely fair. Uh, but on Steve's most recent podcast, he has Vincent Caldoni, who has emailed us. He uh, he's the one who who wrote and directed and basically did everything on Contactee, uh, a very cool movie that everyone should check out on Amazon Prime. Um, it's a very, it's a, a mind fuck of a, a, a sci-fi movie made on a very low budget. Uh, kisses, Steve. All right. Well. Okay. And then. There you go. Everyone's uh, really upset. Wait, wait, wait. Everyone's really no, mad. No, 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 no. We, we, we <laughs> talked about it. But uh, and then uh, there's one from Anthony Charles in Moab, Utah, and uh, we'll just play that so everyone can hear it. Um, and this is about green enchiladas because you can't go on on the internet to find green enchiladas. Hey everybody, it's Anthony. Cooking time. So. I am giving you all the recipe that I love to make. It is a green chili enchilada. Um, I have the 9.5 by 13.5 glass cooking utensil. And I've got two zucchini, two squash, six uh, mini sweet peppers, one onion, a small thing of baby bellas, um, one green chili enchilada sauce, a big one, and then corn, corn tortillas. So I dice everything up and I saute it. <laughs> That's my kid. <laughs> um, so when you're all sauteed up and everything's cooked to your liking, um, you take the tortillas and you line the bottom, try to get all the sides kind of covered, break them in half, you know, make them cover everything. Then you put the enchilada sauce in with all your vegetables that you just sauteed and get them just warm, you know, so mix them all up, get them all mixed. Then you take a scoop or four or however much you want on that first layer. Then 
I use mozzarella cheese. That's the only non-vegetarian part or whatever. Um, mix the uh, cheese on it. Then you put another layer of the tortillas and then you do the same thing. Repeat, repeat, repeat until you are not quite overflowing. <laughs> um, and then what I do is on the last bit, I will put the tortillas and then just uh, sm smear whatever's left over on it, throw some cheese on it. And all you got to do is put it in the oven and cook it till the cheese has turned nice and brown pizza style. And because you've cooked everything, that's all you got to do. And enjoy. It's delicious. And it'll feed you for like, oh God, I don't know, a week. <laughs> all right, guys. Take care. Anthony, thank you so much as always. Uh, like Anthony, Sounds good. Enchiladas enchil are rip. Enchiladas are basically, uh, it's uh, lasagna. Yeah. Sounds With right. corn instead of flour. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That sounds good. I love green yep. enchiladas. And Anthony made us these amazing e earrings and my wife was like, "Where did these come from?" So, Anthony, if you if you have an Instagram or if you're selling these, let us know and if I you already sent that to us, that's on me. Um how did you guys see anything consume any good that's media? That's all the mail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you oh, want to join people, in people, come on. You can do that. Somebody that. fucking email. Jesus Christ. How do they email us, Steve? At noonerpodcast at gmail.com. Said with conviction. Um, I dare you to fucking email us. Has anybody consumed any good media this What past? are they going to email about? Give them a prompt, Steve. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, tell us about the first your first sexual experience. Oh, it's I'll tell you about so gross. <laughs> tell us the most cum you've ever produced. Please Whether don't. With someone, no, 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 with no, 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 Just um, hey, cake recipe. Or a cake no. recipe. Yeah. With cum. You know it's going to be a cum cake. I mean, I think we all know that. Now. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, um, Steve. Just, just um... tell us about your tell us about your first crush. Mm. Yeah. And how we much cum you produced over. when you jerked off and thought about them. Yeah. Uh, have you guys consumed any media over the or past? Or have you ever had a work crush? <gasps> oh, have you guys ooh, ever had a work crush? Cassandra, mm. have you had a work crush? Of course. Everyone has a work crush every once in a while. What was your last work crush? Mm. Well, I was working at a restaurant. So it was one of the waiters I was friends with. And mm. did you... Did you act, did either of you act on it? Did he Nope. Did he respond? Did you feel Why like do you assume it's a he? I think she said him. Yeah. No. I didn't. I've been listening. She didn't. Uh, okay, but she didn't contradict me. Um I know I did. That's my job. Yeah, but th that's okay. I'm very protective of her. Okay. Did Thank you. <laughs> We was were it, neither of us were single at the same time. But was it re were, were the flirtations reciprocated? Sure, but I mean, I don't know if it if it meant anything. Um, I have never been in a proper workplace, so I don't know what that's like. Steve, have you ever had a workplace? Oh, every fucking job I've ever had. I'm not talking about Larry David. I'm talking about um, every job I've ever had. There's always like. It's just, it just happens. You're just stuck with these people. And you're like... And you dislike most of them, and there's one that you go... There's oh. one that like, oh, she gets me. Yeah. And Wait. she never does. Yeah, and she's... Oh, you know what? And she I paid her rent for two months, and still, <laughs> he's like... How, where do you live? Fucking West Hollywood. So That's 2800 2050 a month? Jesus Christ. So can we hang out outside of... Oh, no? no. Okay. Yeah. Have yeah, you just send me your credit card bill. I'll deal with it. Have you had a relationship <laughs> with anybody That's that you've normal. worked with? Yes, I have. Obviously they didn't work out, but No. Oh. Yes. Um were you in a position of power? I was. <clears throat> Had explain. Uh I worked on a television program and she worked on the program and uh we went out for drinks, and then I uh, started having sex with her. I mean, at my home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did have sex with her at work. That was weird. 
right, was like brag. like a network exec of the next room. Like this is weird. All right, now yeah. you're just bragging now. No, um, I was. It was a very sad time in my life. <laughs> I was very lonely. All right. So I was taking it out on this girl. No, I I actually do remember saying, "Are you like in love with me?" She's like, "No." I'm like, "Good," because this ain't going anywhere. This is a work thing. Uh, I'm a gentleman. It, it's funny. It's very very honest, but rude. Yeah. Yes. Steve is ever that's, the romantic. That's me. that's me in like a few yeah, words. That actually, that pretty much is your wedding vows. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were rough. No, but they were honest. No, Steve's wedding vows were so cute. I yeah. did call her a fucking slob in them. I re- I recall that. I know, but that's why it was so cute. Well, because I needed the public to hear what a fucking slob she is, and they your all like place her parents is needed like to know. A weird Marie Kondo place. So fuck you. <laughs> you're like you're like the. Yeah. Oh, so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, did it, So I'm going to go back to my question. Did anybody digest? Marty, did you watch anything? Uh, any content this past week? So we're going to watch, M- 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 what is it called? M- Minari. Minari. We're going to watch Minari, but we when we saw that it, it cost $20 to to rent it, we decided we're going to rent it on Wednesday. So, Yogi, because Yogi wants to watch it, he's going to have his day off. He's get, he's working like three days, and then he gets a day off, and then three days, which working like sex, or is he going to give up his no, sex day? He to is watch this not movie having, he's working at vaccinating people in North Carolina with his oh, dick. That is vaccinating people. When I was at that vaccination <laughs> site, it was it, you could smell the sex. It was. People were ready to fall. Begging for it. Are you yeah. kidding me? Oh, you wear one of those uh, volunteer t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the way how you know. That's how you know who the hot ones are. The ones oh. who are hot to trot. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, go on, John. What you, were, you were explaining something about your weird um, you know, sex-addled child. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, no. Dude, just continue. What, what, just yeah, continue. Tell us about Yogi Fuck Diamond. What's he up to? <laughs> <laughs> he fucks Yogi so hard he makes diamonds every time he fucks. He's so fucking hard and cut glass with that he big comes thick diamonds. Sylvain cock of his. One carat diamonds. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think about what would happen if anybody I knew listened to this. And I just think about it'd just be the end of my life. It really You would. get canceled. Yeah, you would definitely get fired I would be, from I would uh, be kicked out Cal of State my house. Pomona. This is yeah. the safest place. never place. talk to me again. Oh, would, would Shelly be mad? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, Have your wife maybe, on. I don't want to find out. I really don't want to uh, find out. On. Fuck it. She's the best. Shelly's awesome. Because the thing is, is that somebody would listen to this particular conversation and then they go, why are they, why are they assuming that, and then they try and listen and they find find out why I gave you guys the impression, which I never did. Oh, I think he did. Oh, oh my God. Anyway, so he... Uh, he listen he's back. Gonna, listen we're going to try and figure out a way so he can watch <laughs> Minari on his day off uh, when he's not having sex. It is a, <laughs> it is a <laughs> joyful yeah, he, movie. Right from John's mouth. Mm-hmm. Did you did you guys see Minari? Do me a favor, Steve. Steve, will you never say John's mouth ever again? Mm. The way you say it makes it really. Those, I count those coffee rings every time you smile. <laughs> He's fifty-six. <laughs> 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 Callback. Super oh. gross, you guys. Super oh. gross. Hey, I'm doing something fun that involves media, Marty. Go on. I'm I'm gonna watch all the Marvel movies. Oh, oh I already talked about this last week. All right. Oh, yeah, you, keep on you, saying you that. You've been saying that for a long time, and I don't yeah. believe it. Okay, but I mean it. I watched Captain America, and then I tried to watch Captain Marvel, and that stupid fucking Disney Plus app wasn't working. So I called them, called them today, and they said, "Hey, what's up with the app? Why is it so shitty?" Yeah. And I talked and to a really Iger nice person. Was who, there like saying, eh, "You know, I'm not technically CEO anymore, but I'll do my best." Yeah. So he talked me through how to do it and make it better, and it's working great. And as soon as this podcast is over and i finish my salad you know watch captain marvel okay but what did you think of captain america the first avenger it's pretty good yeah it's a pretty good movie chris evans pretty good is is a a, is a compelling that kind of leading guy you know yeah he's great and i mean the the weird cgi of him on the smaller body is like weird distracting because like 
the technology is good, but it's not perfect. Yeah. yeah. But I also like don't really want to live in a existence where it's perfect because yeah. you know you can do a lot of scary stuff that way. Um, but I thought the set. I love the set design of that movie. And it made me interested in watching Agent Carter, which oh. I didn't think I was going to ever want to watch Marvel television. But I was like, well, maybe. But then I was like, no, get through the movies, and then you can backtrack on the TV shows you care about. Cause- Agent Carter is 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 uh, is a uh, is good. It's fun. It's not great. It's fun though. No, I was really a little perturbed by like why there's like just super attractive like female secretaries in the military, but whatever. It's Hollywood, baby. Because men wrote those scripts. Uh, I, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I um, I loved WandaVision, and I, I'm, I don't have a firm opinion on um, uh, the Winter Soldier and Falcon. Uh, John, you've been watching. It's not very good. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why is it not? Why is it not good? Well, it's just. It's just sort of mediocre it's standard right it's standard it's it's just yeah yeah and i mean the action is good the action is incredible yeah it's pretty impressive on that it's very impressive but you know when you have something that where you have a fight the fight on the trucks in the last episode was i want to show it to my my class just as an example of because all all, there's so much impossible stuff that happens in that and you're just trying to think about how they, they coordinate all of the special effects they need to do and all of the action that they need to do. And like, you know, even though 90% of it is digital, um, it's still, you got to have it all planned out to make it seem like it's plausible and would work. And, well, and uh, it's just kind of, it's amazing. It's not, you know, it's not daredevil, you know, five minute uh, fight in the, in the, in the corridor. That was amazing. Well, I mean, here's still, the thing that's uh, interesting is that, you, you know, the Russo brothers are being hailed as these great directors. And I think they are very good directors. I think they have a great sense of, of humor and they have a sense of pacing. But they, if you look at um, the animatics that were created years before, uh, like for, for instance, um, uh, Endgame and... and whatever the, you know, whatever the last uh, one was. But, like, they had everything storyboarded. Like, this this animatics company basically created every option that they could do for all the action sequences. Sure. And and it's it's actually genius because then uh, Marvel can, can, can sort of protect the action parts of it. And then the Russo brothers come in and they direct the hell out of the... the sort of talky parts but you know i was talking to someone i know you know who's involved in that and they're like yeah like they it, they are really you know marvel has are pro- they're protecting their their uh, i their uh ip like very closely and they make sure that the action is just just perfect before mm-hmm. yeah the, so they can fire people and right before and the director other even, people in there before they even hire the director they it's perfect you know yes. and it's it's so the well director there is to talk to actors because the storyboard people can't storyboard right emotion and that's so. why you can hire somebody like the russo brothers who came from community or chloe Zhao who came from nomadland to, to direct these you know 100 million dollar movies and it's it's great i i I think it's really smart i i don't know if you guys think that but well yeah like 20 years ago directors on big sort of actiony or cgi heavy movies had to really deal with all that stuff they had to like well you know i mean i just remember movies years ago like the sets were already built before the script was done like this this is like studio 101 I knew a screenwriter years ago where they're like, they, you know, the thing that you teach screenwriters in the beginning is you don't put camera angles. You just, it's dialogue and action. And they, the studios had moved to like, no, put all the camera angles in there because when we fire that director, we want to be able to bring this other person in and the, the movie's ready to go. The director is just there because someone has to yell action and go do it again, but louder. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so it's like nothing new, but yeah, I mean, no, I think they, but they, I think they've, they've distilled it to a science that actually w- works really well, where they can have consistency of action from film to film, and while they have personality, like Taika Waititi, certainly brought great. God, bl- God bless you. Um, I said Taika Waititi. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Stupidest joke ever. Right. Yeah, I, I, it's funny when you asked about like stuff we watched recently, and uh, you know, I grew up in the era of uh, Eddie Murphy in as a kid <laughs> in the eighties, and I, I rewatched Beverly Hills Cop because I was like, was that good? You know, I rewatched uh, Coming to America, and it wasn't that good. I even when I was a kid, I was like, this is uh, Coming good. to America is not great, but. But Beverly I was Hills like, is Cop Beverly Hills awesome. Cop good? I, I was like, I don't know. And so I watched yeah. about the first 20 minutes. And uh, there's a car chase in the beginning that is just amazing. Just like really well done, but real Eddie visceral. Murphy's great in it too. Okay, just let me finish my point. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Martin Brest directed it. Somebody like, is he, an action, is he an action director? I, I I don't know how they did it. And then so I, 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 I was like, all right, I'll keep watching. And man does eddie murphy have a lot of charisma like wow he is just funny when he just is in a scene doing a stupid laugh like it it would never happen today but i was like legitimately shocked at how well it held up and i was like oh it's the 80s there's going to be some homophobia and there was like a little sprinkled in there bronson pinchot he was just doing a French guy. He wasn't gay. There was oh, um, sorry. one of the my, Wayans, my older Wayans brothers is in, in a scene. But like, it's it's like a really good movie. It's like the serious parts are serious. And, and, and I was thinking about it too. Like, yeah, if they, if they did this today, they'd get like five UCB improvers and everyone would be Eddie Murphy. Everyone would be trying to be funny. Like Eddie Murphy is the only funny one in it. Everyone else is like playing it serious. It's like a, it's a pretty grim story. Like, but his buddy, there's a, a a very marked difference between Beverly Hills Cop and Forty Eight Hours, which is grisly and cruel. Uh, that that was yeah, I don't like Forty Eight Hours. Yeah, it's I, a Walter Hill movie where you get some great Eddie Murphy stuff, but it's like weirdly sadistic. And and I think that you know you got Judge Reinhold and uh, what's his name that other guy. Yeah, they're like Laurel and Hardy. I yeah, forgot like how they're, they're kind just, of they're great. Uh, it, it's 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 a good movie. It, it, mean, it really held up. I was I was legitimately shocked, and I've been watching lots of '80s comedies where I'm like, "Oh wow!" I guess the Asian Anti Defamation League had not formed yet. Because what the fuck? Okay, no more Yankee my wanky. Okay, we're Ugh. moving on. Why was homophobia such a joke? Like why why was being gay that. such a huge? You know joke. what it, it was, was it because they were dying of AIDS. Or no, I'm confused. it's because it was a non-threatening target, and just like John Hughes could make fun of Asians and not fun of make fun of black people, like it's because it was non-threatening to him, and and that is a a problem because it's like, you know, pain is pain, and just isn't it, homophobia like kind of rooted in being threatened by it though? Uh, Probably for sure, for sure. The uh, the humor, if I mean, this is just off the top of my head, but the 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 80s was kind of the beginning of Hollywood just aiming directly at teenage boys um, and not and ignoring every other kind of person in the world. Uh, teenage, white, right. white, white teenage boys who, yeah, who if they had a Twitter in their hand would twit the Twitter, the N word, you know, every other well, but no, instead, they just had frat the, parties where they raped not, women and then got exactly. on the Supreme right, Court. Exactly. Am I fucking right? But, but the, uh, right. The, teenage, the teenage boys were <laughs> just, uh, you, you were, I mean, that, that was the humor in the 80s with teenage boys. It was just like, you know, gay, gay, ha ha, gay, gay, ha ha. Yeah, I saw Eddie Murphy live when I was a kid and he opened his set with, any homosexuals here? And everyone laughed. He's like, good, let's talk about him. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, you he know, opens I, one of his big specials that way too. Oh, it's like I, a, I saw. It. I, I mean, I saw it like live. As a does kid. not hold up. No, and I, but I, I was thirteen. And I thought I was like, oh, that's hilarious. He's making I mean, fun I, of gay people. Yeah, I probably saw Delirious half a dozen times, and I know that every comic of my age watched it 
three hundred times, you know, delirious and raw, and it's so, so disturbing. Do you feel like teenage boys? The biggest threat to them is oh yeah, femininity and like yes. flamboyance, yeah. and yeah. so then that's why it's why they make fun of gay people so much. Well, it's yes. the opposite. It's the opposite of masculinity in their mind, and also it's teenage boys just laugh at things they don't understand. So their minds are not formed yet. John, yeah. how did you how did you um, protect or, or or inform Yogi? I mean, before the sexy stuff, but like, how did you prepare him for that? Like, just going for out, what? Just going out in the world and, and um, you, you know, just uh, how he consumes the things that that come at him, or you know. Uh, oh, I. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a really, it's a big question. Um, yeah. He also is growing up in a world, he's growing up in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, he went to, uh, he went to a hippy dippy uh, elementary school where he had learned to accept people for who they were from the very beginning of his life. And then, you know, half the, his, the world he grew up in, could not have been more different than the world I grew up in. So, well, I mean, you're one of the most hyper masculine people I've ever met, John. <laughs> That's why I'm it's, kind of, I mean, I thought Marty's question was good is like, how are you able to produce a son who does, you know, nothing homophobic? And I think his multiple partners can say that because I, you know, like women, like, or men, whatever, goats, or, or they, or no. No, 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 no that's not fair. Not fair. What? No animals. No. Oh, oh but well, I will you say know that my son, I guess. Yogi oh is one of the most. See, you said that. You said that. We didn't say yeah. that. We're going to. We're that. sending no, I this. Didn't, to, I didn't happen. That didn't happen. We're sending this to Yogi. No, Yogi is one of the most self-assured and like, uh, just like, just comfortable persons I've I've ever met. Like uh, yes. young or old. And I'm just like I. I look at him and I'm how just did that like, happen? I, how did that happen? I I have no idea, Marty. I I he's he's a really great boy, uh, young man, and and I'm so happy for all the sex he's having. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> yep, it's, it's great. So am I. It's really great. I'm so happy for all the sex he's having in mm. your mind. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, when you've got all those bodies intertwined and you oh push God, into like, someone and you're like, I don't know if I pushed into a man or a woman. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Can't tell the I, difference. Is she squirting or peeing? I don't fucking care. It's all over my face. Okay. <laughs> and that's what those, you know, that kind of education and life can provide for you. One yeah. of the things. Sexual openness. Yeah. Yep. And and the way I grew up in New Hampshire, where the, the nearest person of color was four thousand miles away. Hello. Yeah, Hawaii. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, did anyone watch Sharp Objects? Sharp no Sharp Objects. The show? It's a uh, Jillian Flynn who wrote um uh, Gun Girl. Gun Gun Girl. Gun Girl. Uh, she wrote this um, other novel about uh, more white people killing each other and a lot of sordid sex. And uh, Yuck. I, I started watching that, and it's interesting. And, and I just wonder, like, actually, I, I, I've been reading the book, and in the book, the protagonist refers to crime stories in another uh, region. So she's like, oh, well, like, I'm covering this crime story here. She's a reporter. And uh, meanwhile, in, you know, Yakima, Washington, like somebody like, you know, fucked the ear of a, you know, of a small child. And I'm like, why would you need to like go into such graphic detail? Why can't you just say like somebody killed a small child? Why does it have to be fucked the ear of a small child? Like, isn't it HBO? Yeah, it's HBO, but but that's why. But this is in the Not book TV. too, and I'm just like, why, why do you have to like take? Because she's trying to be edgy. She's a fucking. She's so basic. I read her. I read Gone Girl. I thought it was poop. I thought the movie was poop. She's just there's like nothing the there. So I like the movie. 
movie sucked. You're wrong. Okay. Um, but that shower or, scene where you see the outline of Ben Affleck's wee wee. I, I have, fr- I have frozen shower. that frame. It, 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 yeah, no. Blown it up. That, that is a great moment of the movie. It's not in the book. She's she's oh. just trying to be. But John, are you okay? You turned bright red. I don't know if John, are you laughing because I said wee wee? Uh, no, I'm just thinking about. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have Ben Affleck's dick in the book. No. <laughs> it was in, it, you know what the funny His thing? Big, thick, bulbous, the funny headed. Thing, it fucking was in my thumb. book, and it wasn't bulbous at all. It was just perfect. That was nice. He has a nice cock. Yeah, right, in my Grace. book, it did. Now, Casey, 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 Casey's he's packing the fucking the, uh, but, the, like, the Louisville I don't slugger. Know why you, know what you mean? need to shit on my yeah. opinion of it? Like you can just say like I didn't he care didn't for shit it. on it. He just said you were wrong. You just yeah. oversaid. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh disagreed, Marty. Hey, I John, liked the hey, John, movie thanks for getting my back. Um, but you're wrong. It's a, not a good movie, and it's not a good book. And she's she is one of those like I need to be edgy because I don't really I don't have know if much it's edgy. else. I think it's I think it's sensationalism, which is your it's tomato tomato. Oh, Come I'm on. sorry, racist bigot. Go ahead. That is the title of the show, racist bigot. Right. Racist bigot. Thank you. Me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Rosamund you. Rosamund Pike <laughs> is is a national treasure. She's amazing, but she's not of our nation. I she's didn't like nation. the. Uh, I care a lot. Also, oh. uh, Gillian Flynn ruined one of my favorite shows. Uh, actually, my favorite show of all time, which is a British show called Utopia. And for no reason, they remade it on Amazon Prime. And she yeah, but now it you, can, you can stream it. the original on Amazon Prime. But, I know, which is good. But she, but Cassandra, I, I'm, I'm annoyed by her. You just totally ignored <laughs> Cassandra when, when she was saying something. The fuck did she say? Doesn't matter. No, no, Cassandra, please. I didn't like the movie I Care a Lot, which has Rosemond Pike in it. But her wife in it is so. Yeah, her wife in it is super hot. And, super hot. But that doesn't make the movie better to me. I was hoping it was going to be good. And then I was like, Ugh, this movie's fucked up. It, uh, so it, it's about. Um, the... I shouldn't call it bad. I just I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But yeah. it was. It was fine. It's about. These th- this con that the this uh, Rosamund Pike pulls on old people and basically takes control of their money, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a Netflix movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not for me. Uh, okay. Well, uh, for next week, does any is anybody interested in seeing the Eric Andre prank movie with Tiffany Haddish? Oh, I heard that was pretty good. I have unfortunately I have seen it and it is fucking brilliant okay let's all watch it. i loved it let's all watch it for next week it's on netflix what is it? it's, it's just... called bad trip yeah bad trip. not yeah. a good title St- uh, T- tiffany haddish is in it and eric andre and it is really really good yeah uh let's all, all right. watch it for next week i think that's uh, really fun and and it does bring up and i uh, let, let's have this as a subject for next week uh, about prank movies because um the you know, the issue of prank movies is like you're just making fun of people, um, which yeah, there are examples of that. And there are examples where that's funny. Uh, you know, the, there's the Borat movie, which is the, the last one was just uh, all, both of the, both of the Borat movies have been great. Um, but I, I do wonder, like, where what is the limit of like, where, where are you being funny? And when are you when are you just poking at, you know, puppies, you know? Um, okay. Yeah. So, are you about to make us talk for two hours next week about how much you don't like Jamie Kennedy, Marty? You have to drop this. Uh, he was in the first scene that I, uh, the the scene that I got my SAG card. So I love Jamie Kennedy. And you've been rivals ever since. We get it. <laughs> I won. You I don't won. Like it's Jamie the Marty you prank show. Hey. Uh, hello, lady. Oh, I can't do this. I just can't do it. Oh. Marty, did you get your SAG card acting in Son of the Mask? Uh, I was the son of the son of the son of the son of the mask. Cool. And that's how I got my SIG card. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it how I can get it. Um, Cassandra, what was on Trashy Trashy yesterday? What What launched? What plopped? Uh, what did we talk about? UFOs. Um, it's 
called it's called Nature's Pockets. Why? Um, because we talk about storing alcohol in our bras. Um, and um, you know that's my pocket too. That well, but like you know that your there's a TikTok trend where your boobs can hold up weight. So we talked about that, and we talk about um, that we talk about the boat. You know that's now free, and then that uh, that cinnamon toast. Oh, you crunch call it evergreen in the guy. in the notes. There it says evergreen, but it's not. Yeah, we look right? fucking yeah. stupid now. There it is. Yeah. Oh, what about oh, you? Well, I mean, whatever. Ever- we you guys it have ever- like a lot of show notes, evergreen. like it, 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 pages and pages. Of, like, well, because we like to show people no. the articles if I they like, want to read no, the articles. No, I like that. That's it's called like effort. You, that's called you effort. You could spend that's a whole day. Podcast is about. Uh, okay. That's yeah, Erica's dope. Yeah, she's also super funny. Well, uh, this has yeah. been a really fun 10 years, Marty. I'm glad it's no, ending no, 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 on a high no. note. How fucking and dare you? to all no, the no. listeners, okay. uh, <laughs> thank you for being a part of cut this. His mic. Cut, his mic. cut his mic. <laughs> uh, John, who's on? You <laughs> know it. This you know it. This week we have. Uh, we what have aging Yale fun. actor have you uh, cajoled? I'm busy. Nope. We have. Uh, we're doing. <laughs> I said uh, actor. Celebrating uh, its six, six schools' twenty fourth uh, birthday on the first. Who's what? what? Wow! So we're gonna have a bunch of Sacred Fools people. And oh yeah, I'm a Sacred Fools person. Like who? Who? Do you want to be on it? Who of Sacred Fools is gonna be on it? Um, it's gonna be Brian Wallace and his wife Aviva Pressman. Uh, uh, like and, the end um, of every show is a <laughs> list of theater people. Also, Marty, you can't just ask who's gonna be there. This is an opportunity for you to be on a YouTube live show. Yeah, but I wasn't invited. That's okay. Um. Mm-hmm. Steve, so everybody, Brian Wallace is awesome. He did sound or lights on a show I, I did. He was great. He was so cool. Um, I really like Brian a lot. Uh, no, that's And good. I probably missed my mark most, it's probably 70% of the time. So, um, Steve? Yes. Subterra. Oh yeah, can you uh, can you do a table read on Saturday? Busy. I'm doing. Um, I'm doing. You know it. It's not on Saturday. Yeah. Silly goose. What are you, you talking you about? Man? You don't know it. You don't know it. All right. Just uh, put it in my calendar. Uh, super excited. Like season two is expanding beyond. The fucking annoying guy who just like way through. I just read episode eight tonight, and I'm like, "Oh, it's going to be good." Marty's going to have a lot to do. No, I don't want a lot to do. I want I want the show to be great. It's going to be a really really fun time. Um, I love that everybody's doing great things. We're going to continue doing great things, and we're going to talk about it, and we will keep everybody oh in the loop. How it's been dare 10 years, you? Hey, Marty, I just put in an offer on the house next door. <laughs> okay, I'm moving. Anyhow, <laughs> really great uh, knowing everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, any last words as we sign off? Can you guys list a few more theater people no one's ever heard of? Just to, no, please. You know. I, I, I really want to get on with my night. I- <laughs> You know, it's been nice. back to back to back tonight for me or today. I don't got time for to hear more theater people. Not tonight. Okay. No. If, if you knew Brian's wife, you'd be like, I'm in. Guys, it's been a great 10 years. It's been a great run. Bill Waterson, Emily, Giselle, uh, James Franco, the whole zoo crew. Really enjoyed this time with Marty and John and Cassandra. Right. The, Please, the great, like, the great four pack at the end of this us emails, run. Noonerpodcast at gmail dot com. We love your feedback. We want to hear everything that's going on with you. We're going to discuss the future of this podcast. It's all good, and we love your input and. We will see you next Tuesday. No, we won't. This is it. This is the end.
yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Imp that post. Imp that feet. Imp that post. Imp that foot. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio.